What is going on everybody and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's discussion video today guys. This is going to be a very exciting video as we're going to be discussing Season 2 of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's. It's finally time guys. We are now going into Season 2 of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's and I'm just very excited to be talking about this. Now before we begin, I want to mention that I will be mentioning some stuff from Episode 52. Obviously that episode has not come out in subs yet of the time of recording. This so you prob some of you probably have not watched it unless you watched an unsub when it was actually airing. So I do want to preference this. You guys know yourself better than I do. So if you don't want any spoilers or anything news in regards to Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 season 2, and you're gonna wait until you watch episode 52 before you come to this, please just put this in a watch later or something like that and come back when you have watched episode 52, and then you can join in a discussion for season two. And we got some interesting stuff that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the new characters that are going to be in Season 2. I'm going to briefly go over the ending. I'm not going to be going over the opening in this video since I already did a video on this. This is just kind of a... Um, in addition to this video since I never did a video on the ending so I will be discussing that and then just kind of discuss some things that I want to see in Season 2 of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7. So, with all of that out of the way, I'm very excited to be getting into this. So, without further ado, let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. Alright guys, here we go, and quick shout out to the YGO organization for um, giving us this information. Obviously, this is the site that I use to get any news in regards to the OCG and TCG, to Sevens news, to really anything. So shout outs to them for actually putting this on their site. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 Season 2, Space Operation YGO, let's go. Starting on June the 20th, enter the second season, a new visual as well as commentary from the wonderful cast playing the key characters in the second season of Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is revealed. Obviously, talking about the new villains that are going to be appearing in the show. In fact, we actually got a nice shot of the characters at the end of the episode, and I believe right after the episode um, on the um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duel Twitter, we actually did ended up seeing this big image where you see like Yuga, Gakuto, Roman, and Luke all in space, and they're basically looking up at the spaceship that we saw at the end of episode 52 with the actual characters, not just like blacked out like Neil was and Ro and Asana was, excuse me, and then all obviously go at double six for to some degree, but that was a little bit later in the show. They normally had this trope of introducing the villains at the end of the episodes. I, I guess for the Asana arc that we had the go uh, six elementary arc, we had Mr. Go at the end, but it wasn't a solo character since we already knew that. But get on back on topic, we actually do see the designs in them right away, but we'll get into that in just a second. But there is more to read on this, which it's interesting. But back into this, the strongest card battle, jump into the story of Rush Duels, the TV anime Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens airing every Sunday at 7.30 on TV Tokyo, and its affiliates enter its second season starting on June 20th, and I guess they decided to repeat that. And with this announcement, a new key visual has been revealed. The impactful visual shows the passionate battle with the newly introduced characters, the Goha siblings. Furthermore, the cast playing the new characters are have also been revealed commentary from the wonderful cast consisting of Takuya Eguchi, Masaki Gnano, Akira Tan Tandano, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing these names wrong, by the way, Sh Sh Soma Saito, I almost said Shoma, and Daika ya Yamashita is also included. I really do hope I pronounce those names right. I cannot read Japanese to say my life. Well, English, Japanese, I guess I should say, but... So we knew, know the new group. It's the Goha siblings. So these new characters are related to Goha, and... Although I'm excited, I am a little bit worried about this because the last couple of times we've been introduced to Goha, like, or people are related with Goha, they haven't really done the best, or at least in terms of, like, big groups, because six people in the group I think is a pretty decent amount. I think of, like, Top of Hexagon and Goha Double Six. Honestly, they were complete jokes, so I'm really hoping that these villains aren't jokes at all. But let's get into the first character, shall we? And the first character that we're going to be going over, which I'm going to assume is the leader of the group, is Euro. 
which is voiced by Takuya Eguchi, and he comments, Since I was in elementary school when the official card game of Yu-Gi-Oh! was first released and I started playing, the tension of recording the duel scenes was already rushing for me. <laughs> I love the pun there. The atmosphere at the studio was already overflowing with love for Yu-Gi-Oh! So it was a lot of fun. I have built three decks for Rush Duel so far, so I'd like to duel against lots of different people. Rush Duels is the best. Clearly a fan of the whole Rush Duel thing, which I know Rush Duels are pretty popular in the OCG, which is a good thing. That's a really good thing because you already have the Master Duels, but having something else that is this popular, that's a good sign for Yu-Gi-Oh! So we do get the design of this character. I actually don't mind his design. I think his design actually looks pretty interesting to say the least, but let's get into the next character, shall we? Up next, we have... Goha sibling member Eugene, who is voiced by Masaki Yano. His comment, it was the first time playing this kind of role for me, so I was very nervous when I first received the script. But as I kept replaying passionate duelists in my head, I prefer performed keeping my mind as if it was constantly about to activate Tenjin Max, which maybe is a card that he plays, maybe it's his ace, I have really no idea. I'm very glad I could meet Yujin or Eugene, whatever you want to call it, both as an actor and as, as a duelist. I'm excited about finding out what the story is going to be like for now on Together with all of you. So, just based off that, I mean, we didn't really get much about the first character. I didn't really mention much about that. Maybe he's, like, really into Rush Duels or something like that. But this guy, just based off what, what he said, this character might be a passionate duelist. Like, he might really like to duel. And... I'm just going to make a quick prediction right now. I feel like this character might face Luke in the future. I, I really do have a feeling that this character in particular, I just don't know. I don't know why. I just feel this way. I think this is go going to be the character that Luke faces at some time. Whether he loses or not is going to be when we actually get to that point. But let's get into the next one, shall we? Up next, we have Yuka, voiced by Akari Tendano. I really hope I'm pronouncing that name right. Uh, which, from what it looks like already, I think this is going to be the only girl character in this group. So that's pretty interesting, as the other ones don't really look like females. It, or at least I'm just basing it based off of the voice actors. This is the only girl voice actor, so she might be the only girl one in the group. And also, I'm kind of noticing a pattern with this, with all of them having a U name in it for some reason, so that's pretty interesting. Her comment is, Pleased to meet you. I'm Akira... Tandano, and I do the voice of Yuka of the Goha siblings. In order to be able to deliver her charming cheerfulness, zeal, and overwhelming perceen, I'll special summon everything I can from me and give it my best, which, love the passion in that, but it seems like this character is going to be very cheerful. I guess she's going to be like Kind of like a cheerleader, but not really, because oh, when I think of cheerleaders, I think of Taya and Anzu from their respective shows, but I don't think she's going to be like that. I think she is going to duel, and I do think she's either going to duel Roman or Sana. Obviously, I feel like we need that girl versus girl action, so I feel like it's either going to be our main girl of the group or Asana, if Asana is going to be involved with this, but we'll, we'll get into that more when we actually get into the discussion portion of this video, but let's go on to the next character. And that character is Yuren, voiced by Soma Saito. His comment, I'm so Soma Saito, and I do the voice of Yuren of the Goha siblings. I'm very glad to be able to appear in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series. I love to boast about it to my past self. Among the already, already puzzling Go Goha siblings, Yuran is even more reserved and mysterious. If you want to learn more about their activities, make sure you watch the show. Thank you for this opportunity. Now, this is actually pretty interesting. So, he might be... Well, the whole group is complex, which is a good sign. I actually like that. I'm very excited to learn about these characters. But he sounds like he's going to be the most reserved one out of the group, so I don't know, maybe he will duel Luke. No, actually, I take that back. He might duel Gakuto. I really have a feeling that this seems like a character that might duel Gakuto, or, or maybe Neil would be a good one as well. I have no idea. Now, maybe I'm jumping too far ahead when it comes to this, but we'll get a little bit later on to that. Maybe I should stop doing that, and let's just go over to characters, because this actually seems like the last member of the Goha group. 
or I should say they're more accurate titled the Goa siblings, and that character is you, voiced by Daiki Yamashita. His comment is, in this opportunity, I will be playing Yuo, the fifth child of the Goha siblings. I'm excited to find out what kind of deck he'll be using and what kind of duels will he have. To think that this is the result of dueling with my friends back in school, yelling out as far as we could, now it's finally the time to show it. It's my turn, draw. That That's actually pretty cool. I feel like every child was that. Like when you have like the old, like plastic, or not plastic, Duel. It's like the old dual disc that you can like buy at a Walmart or something like that because I actually remember those dual discs when I was a kid and you would just go to the park or something like that, put on the dual disc, get your deck in there, bend the cards because obviously you didn't know the things were trash and you just duel like you're in the anime. Is that just me? That's probably just me, but I don't know. But this actually seems like the last character, which is very interesting, but we'll get into that in a second and I'll kind of explain why that's pretty interesting. But let's go over to the last character, shall we? And the last character on this list is Guru Guru, voiced by Yuri Eyes. His comment is, my name is Yuri Eyes and I will be playing Guru Guru. He makes you think, isn't that a cute monster at first glance? But at the same time, he also has a mysterious side since you cannot see his true face, making him an interesting character. Guru Guru is shy, but tries his best. Please keep an eye out for him. Um, that is pretty ominous, to say the least. Um, a very fascinating character. So we are getting another character that's not, it seems not to be a part of the main villains of this show, So or this arc, I should say, because I don't know if they're going to be the full season or not. So that's pretty interesting of what this character's role is going to be, either in this arc or in season two as a whole. So, yeah, that's definitely the most interesting character. Not saying the other ones are interesting at all, but the fact that he's not a member of the group and the fact that this last line says, please keep an eye out for him, that is very interesting. But, guys, that's going to be it for all of the new characters and their voice actors kind of commenting on the characters. So let's kind of talk about it, shall we? But um, general thoughts on the new characters... They seem very interesting. They are. I actually think this is going to be an interesting group of villains, to say the least. And even Guru, for that matter, especially how that last line was said. But we do have to address the elephant in the room in this because although we do see six characters on this, Guru is not one of the members of the Goha siblings. And if you notice from the image that we got... There are still six characters from this. Obviously, you have the main leader in Euro, and then on the right side, you have Eugene and then Yuo. And then on the left side, you have Yuran and Yuka, but there's another character there that we don't know who it is. This is fascinating, because why didn't we get introduced to this character? Why did we get introduced to all of the other members of the group, but we left out, in particular, this one? And I've heard a lot of different things from this. I've heard that this character might be Otis, which would make sense, because one thing, too, from episode 52, was that we didn't get an explanation of why he was trying to uninstall Rush Duels. We had no explanation of that, so maybe he will get it explained in this arc while he's a part of the Goha siblings. Um, I don't know. I've heard a lot of people also go down the route that this might be Yuga, like a different version of Yuga, and I know that sounds crazy, but... I can understand where people are going with that because think about this. Every single one of the members of this group always have that you name in it. Like think about it. The yellow haired kid, which I'm assuming is the leader, Euro. Then you have Eugene, Yuka, um, Euron, and then you. So they all had that you name in there. And who's a character that we know that has the you name? Yuga. Now, whether that's going to be Yuga or not, I, I really doubt it. I don't, unless they do some weird time traveling crap, which we've seen before. I mean, Sweet Skakaku kind of did that. You know, she went back to her time period after that duel with Yagi. So maybe this is a future Yuga. I really have no idea. I'm not going to go too far in speculations of that, but it's very fascinating that we did not get any information about that character. But with that being said, that's going to be it for the discussion of the new characters. But. 
um, kind of speaking, what do I want to see in just season two? Not just specifically this arc, but just season two as a whole. One of the biggest things that I want to see is the understand Otis's motives. Why was he trying to uninstall Rush Duels? Because he did not explain anything whatsoever in wanting to uninstall Rush Duels, which is something I wanted to see in episode 52, but I guess they decided they wanted to do this at another time, so that's pretty interesting. And he actually succeeds in uninstalling Rush Duels, but until Yuga uses plot armor and is able to reinstall Rush Duels, so obviously Rush Duels are going to stick around, so that's pretty interesting. Um... I guess I'll discuss the ending real quick. Um, we did get an announcement that the ending is going to be coming, which I got a little bit concerned because of the fact that it wasn't announced with the opening, but we have confirmation that we're going to get the ending, which I'm very excited for this ending as well. I will say, though, what's interesting about this ending is I wonder how they're going to do this. Are we going to do the traditional endings we normally do, which is just the um, band that actually sings it? Or are they going to do similar what they did for the first ending and having a character from the show end up singing it? I don't really care whatever the way they want to do it. If I had to make a prediction on who is going to be doing it, I think it's just going to be the band that's actually going to be doing the ending and not going to be the characters. I feel like they just wanted to make that an exception since, like, you know, they were a part of Goha 7th Elementary. So it makes sense that they would be singing basically their anthem for the school. So that's interesting but that's a little discussion on the ending um an another thing that i want to see is the whole co lineup you know sorako chikako um sweet chikako and flash umiko i want to see their characters expand a little bit and i want to see what they're all about because they have been really interesting i still can't get over that sweet chikako line with her mentioning chikako so i want a little bit more explanation on these characters um, I don't think they're going to be really relevant in this arc, but who knows? Maybe we'll get another character in the form of this. And maybe that Shadow character is a Ko, or one of the Ko's, which I really doubt it. It doesn't really look at, like it whatsoever, just based off of his design. It actually looks like a actual human character, not like a girl, like alien kind of character. So I doubt it's going to be it. But I do want to see that coat line extend a little bit more. Um, I also have, I guess I'll mention this as well. I've heard about the new um, mechanic that's going to be coming into the show, whether it's a new, new mechanic or a new mechanic. Um, I'm pretty excited to see that. I really do hope we see, see one of the old, older mechanics. I know there's the whole conflict between that, but it's either going to be bringing back an old mechanic or they're going to do a new, new mechanic. So that's going to be pretty interesting to see what that is. Um, it sounds like it's going to be for the extra deck, which makes me a little bit more excited since we're going to be seeing the extra deck a little bit more. So I'm really excited to see what that's going to be all about whether it is a new new mechanic or a new mechanic that was from the master rule format and the final thing that i want to discuss in this video and this is just a personal want that i want the show to do for this upcoming season and i've done a whole entire video about this and this has been a problem that i've had with sevens for a while and i want them to finally change it in season two and that is to stop doing the 13 episode arcs i am really getting sick and tired of this 13 episode bullcrap they really need to start extending the episodes a little bit more because what i was mentioning earlier about being worried is that i think of the goa double six members and the go um um top of hexagon members and even neil's team for that matter as well since that was a bigger group i felt like they couldn't get fleshed out as much because of the fact that, well, Go Odd Double Six were in Top of Hexagon were really just like completely useless. They served no purpose whatsoever. But I think of Neil's team, and I feel like that team was very lackluster. And I feel like I have that kind of feeling towards that was because of the fact that we didn't really get to see much develop between the characters because of the fact that. We only had 13 episodes to work with it. Not saying they didn't have any development at all. I mean, I think uh, Geta got some pretty interesting development from that. But I feel like there's so much lost potential in not having extended episodes. Now, if there's a whole worry, because I kind of talked about it in that um, arc length problems video, that maybe they're doing this because they are told that they can only put 13 episodes into a disc. 
Easy solution. Double the episodes. If you double the episodes of the arcs, I think you have a lot that you can work with in regards to this arc. I really do believe that you have the potential of doing so much more than keep doing the 13 episodes. And I'm really worried that they're going to do it and they're going to end up maybe shafting these characters because... They're too much on a time crunch. So I really do hope that they stop with the 13 episode arcs. That's probably been my biggest gripe about this show overall is because I feel like you you restrict yourself a little bit too much because you only give yourselves 13 episodes to really work with this whole group or just anything in general. So I really do hope going into this next season... We just extend the arcs a little bit. Go from 13 to 26, or if you want to go to extra length, you can do it even longer. But if you don't want to go that long in terms of an arc, just make it 26 episodes into one arc. I think that just gives you so much more potential. But whether you're going to do it or not, let's just hope so. That's probably my number one once. But other than that, that's going to really be it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys thought of the Goha siblings in general. Do you like the characters? Do you think the characters are okay? Or do you not really like the characters at all? And what do you think of Gururu? And I hope I'm saying that right as well. What do you think about his character? Do you think he's going to play a major role in this upcoming season? Or do you think he's not going to really do that much? He's going to be kind of a more side character like a Metsuboro or a Bakuro or something like that. And let me know what you just want to see in season two in general. Like, I would love to see your guys' thoughts of what you want to see. I guess another thing I could mention as well is some more stuff with President Drone. I think it would be pretty interesting to see more of what he can do, especially since he might know who these Goha siblings are. So that would be pretty interesting if, like, they had a connection between each other as well. So I would like to see a little bit more dynamic with them as well. But with all that being said, that is going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, guys, take care and have yourselves a great rest of your day.